Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game, another one. I got a good portion of the cage done and crossed to here now. I got the halo bar put in, the two front door bars put in, the diagonal bars in the doors, the bars going out to the front, got them all bent up, all made up, and fitting in the car. And I got bars going out to the back as well, so I got a good portion of the cage done in the car. Uh, so I can get ready now to mount everything, dash, steering wheel, turbo, all that type of stuff, right? Well, what I'm going to show you on this one here now, I'm going to show you how to notch pipe with a grinder. That's right, notching pipe with a grinder. Stick around. Well, let's get back at Krusty, okay? Uh, in the last video, I made the main loop. I got that all fitting in there. I haven't got it welded in yet. I just got to fit in there because I may have to push it back in order to make the next bar. My next thing I'm going at now is I'm making these bars here. The bars goes along here, down here, and down through here. Now, I've been playing around with uh, some ideas, looking on the internet and stuff like that. There's a couple of ways you could do it, okay? I can make one continuous bar come down come down and come down here I can make a halo which comes across here across the front here and down this side here to the bar on the back side and then make two down bars the first thing I got to do here now is I got to remove a few mounts I have some mounting sections right here uh, the corner of the dash I'm gonna have to cut it out of the way I'm gonna tidy job cutting it out because I want to weld it back in again later uh, but I'm trying to get the dash bar down ahead as far as I possibly can at least to the point that it's Halfway in the dash and halfway in the dash pad that way I just got to notch past the, the half the dash pad and it's only easy to take the dash out of the car problem being is if The bar goes down through in here somewhere um, You're gonna have a problem with trying to make the dash pad look proper, but if I can get it into the steel part of the dash uh, it should be fine and I also got to take consideration that I got the door the rubber that I got to deal with here So I'm gonna go ahead now trim out these few pieces here get them out of the way get them brackets right here Get them removed and then remove there and get it all ready and size the things up So I went ahead and I cut the two corners out of the dash is the sections here that I cut out You can see the, the sections of the dash has gone there and all I'll do later on now is I'll trim that up to fit around the roll cage and I'll weld that back in there again and I also removed the uh, door post section, the this section here. And I just, all I did there is I just allowed spot welds, okay? And the metal in this is extremely thin, and it's very hard. You actually got to drill out the entire spot weld because if you tap it at all, you'll end up tearing it, as you can see here. Right? You'll end up tearing the sheet metal on the car. But I got that cut out. Then I sat down and started sizing everything up. Now, the problem I got is I got to come up here, and then I got to tip it in and tip it back, and then come up here. And then I got to tip it out and then tip it back, right? So the problem I have, I'm trying to have it as high to the ceiling as I possibly can. So the other scenario that I get myself into is that I can make the halo bar first, which runs from here, comes down, runs across here, and all the way around the roof, and goes back to the roll cage again. So that's what I'm planning is then, and then I'm going to have a bar going from here, coming down, bent, and going down to here, Okay. That's what I'm going to do. I want to have it up as high as I can. Again, again, I'm extremely tall, and I want as much headroom as I possibly can, so I want the roll cage to be tucked tight to this. Some of you have asked about uh, welding up the roll cage, where it's tight to the body here and whatnot. I want it tight like this because I want to weld this. I'm planning on putting a plate here and welding that right to the body, okay? I like having that weld there, and I intend to do the same thing up here on the post. If I ever get in a scenario where the roof wants to be torn off the car, uh, I would like to have it joined onto the roll cage to help it from actually being torn clear right off the car. Because if it's not joined on, it'll just it'll just come clear of the car, and then the whole top of the car will be open. So that was my whole idea behind that. Some have asked about how I'm going to weld up all this roll cage. Uh, if you're new here, I'm taking the body off of this car. If you look down here, I got the plating system on the car, and if you look here, this is this is the chassis. It's only tack welded on in four locations, in all four corners here, okay? It's only tack welded on here and here and on the inside as well. I'm going to cut these tacks. I'm going to lift the body right up off the car. I'm going to weld up all the roll cage, 
paint the roll cage and then put all that put the body back on and then i'll solid weld these back on after that okay so you know there's a few questions here people asking about that that's the reason why i'm not worried about getting it up too tight and having to weld roll cage i'm just my whole plan is is like i got done back here as i got this roll cage i cleaned up the rear bar and i turned around and i tack welded it in place i'm not going to solid weld it yet because i might want to change something so what i'll do now is i'll go ahead and i make the halo bar and I'll make all the bars, I'll just tack weld them in place so I'll know where everything got to go. And that way, uh, once I'm happy with everything, then I can start welding everything up. I'll take the body off the car, I'll weld so much of it up, and then I'll take the body off the car and weld the rest of it up. So, I'm going to go ahead now and start making this halo bar. So I got my old template up that I had the main loop out of. I'm going to reuse this now. I'm not going to cut it, I'm just using it for the measurements. I turned around and I measured from the roll, car roll cage back here. I measured, I measured from here up to the middle here, was what I did. I measured that entire width there, okay? It'll be a bit longer, I'll have to trim off the back side there. So what I went and did then is I measured that distance there, and then I measured the distance across here, and the distance across here. Both of them distances are the same, okay? So that was good. So it worked out that I, grab the measuring tape, it worked out that I measured it off, and it was 31 inches. Now the overall width was 40 from outside to outside. Here's my center line I had on the other one. So I measure from there out 20 up here, measure from there out 20, and I turn around and marked it all off. There's one, then once I had this marked off, I just marked it with a line. Okay, I got that marked there to the line. So it's just a square box, is all I gotta make now, which is simple. So I took this cheater pipe that I had made and I fit this into my marks. One there, one there. So I lined it up so it fit inside of it. Then I marked my positions here. This is where my bend starts. This is where I got to set it up in the bender. So I marked it, start point, right? Done the same thing over here and marked it as well. Then I counted off here, which is 17 inches to here. Then I measured from here out to the end here, which is 35 inches, okay? So it's 35 inches from here, coming up, going to be through this bend to the center line, or to here, it's 35 inches. From here, all the way down, that's 35 inches. I measured this up from across the front here, and that was uh, 24 inches. So I got two sides, 35, which is 70, 24, which is 94, okay? 94 inches, so this entire piece of steel I need is 94 inches. And then I'm just going to put two 90 degree bends in it, like so, from here. And I got my point started here, so I'll measure off my center line. I'll find the center of the pipe, and I'll come over here. Uh, I think it is, well, half of 24 is 12. I'll come over here 12 inches, and I'll make my bend. And I'll go over there 12 inches and make my bend. Okay? So I'll turn around and get that done, get a piece of pipe cut out, get that all ready, and start bending that up. So there it is. That's the loop up around the top. Uh, put two bends in it worked out really well lines up really nice on my, on my uh, Measurements there goes along the line there along the line there Over on the other side Lines up good, right? So on the line, so that's pretty good there now. I'm happy with that uh, Never had much troubles with it bit of tweaking here and there not serious uh, But uh, it worked out pretty good. I put it in there put it on 90 degrees and it was close. I had to go like 92 degrees because like a lot of people talked about spring back, which was there. Um, and I, you wouldn't notice it until you actually took it out of the machine. Uh, so it was, uh, it was interesting. So about 93 degrees on that there with the, and then the spring back brought it back to 90. So it was close on three degrees. So now I'm going to rig something up here now and get some ratchet straps wrapped around the roof here so I can slide it up and lay it in place. So I can just hang there so I can get an idea where it all got to go. Because something tells me I may have to tweak these ends in a small bit on either side right here. I might have to tweak these in, and I may have to cut them off even more yet. I'm not quite sure. I just want to get them up in place, get this where I want it to go, and uh, see how it fits. So get that done now. So I went ahead, and all I did is I took some ratchet straps, wrapped them around the roof, and strapped them on so they could hang down. I could slide the uh, roll cage in over top of that. It'll rest there. Then I took some 2 by 3 uh, scrap wood um, and cut that off and had that so I can prop it up 
on top of the strapping so I can raise it up tight to the roof and everything. And so I went ahead and I fit the roll bar in there, or the, the upper loop. I fit it in place. And I fit it in place, and I tweaked it, and I tweaked it, and I tweaked it, and I tweaked it. And what I ended up doing, as you can see here, there's the one I tweaked. I had to make a new one. I'm telling you, I got into it, and the whole problem with it was this wouldn't fit up nice inside the roof, okay? This section right here was a quarter of an inch too wide for it to fit up proper in the roof on either side, so it was a half inch out, okay? This measurement here was throwing me off, okay, in here. And I played around with it. I tried tweaking it a couple of different ways. Uh, I don't like putting bends in the front bar, but I, th I was thinking that maybe if I bent them, I could tuck it up higher and I put little bends in it here never done nothing for it I didn't like the way it looked it still never it still wasn't sitting where I wanted to and I just scrapped the whole idea I was at this last night uh, at this bar and I probably got about five five hours into it and I just had to walk away from it so I come out here this morning and started from scratch again bent up a new bar I never sanded it I to sand these pipes I got to put about an hour in no clean them all up getting them ready I figured I'd do all that before I bend everything and it's just like no I'm just going to come out here this morning bend it up and I'll sand it now when I'm ready to go uh I got this one fitting in fit I got this one fitting in the car nice okay it fits right like the way I want it I had to put these little bends in the end corner here and then I had to put a fish mouth in it to fit around the, the main loop, okay? I'm not going to get into this yet. I'm going to show you uh, later about um, making fish mounts because I does all this freehand. Uh, but I just had to put these little bends in there. So, so all I got left to do now is I'm going to sand this, get this all prepped so I can put it up in place. I've after fitting it in two or three times and fine-tuning the two uh, mounting points on either end. And I got it where I think I'm happy with it now. So I'm going to get this all prepped and sanded and... Uh, Get that so I can fit it up in the car. But this is like, you know, you're going to run into stuff like this. Uh, I think the mistake was made. I honestly believe that I should have cut this out. Okay. I should have cut that out. I should have fit that up into the car. And I would have seen the problem that I had. The problem I had is this here was sticking out too far. At the measurement at 40 inches, this was out too far. And it was pushing down. And I didn't like the way it was. The front of the bar across the front was too low. And I could bend in these ends here and uh, tip it in and it worked. But the roll cage used to come out or the, the loop used to come out and it was stuck off too far here. There's nothing you can do with it unless you cut it in half. And I'm not going like that. Um, so it's just like if I had to cut the template out, fit it up in the car, I would have seen the problem. Okay. That's where I figured I made the mistake. Uh, once I had this first one made, I could see what was going on and I knew what the measurements had to be. So I went ahead then and just changed them. I moved all the measurements in a quarter of an inch on the outside here and just bent up a new bar. So I'm going to go ahead now, get this all sanded and get prepped up. Chalk it up to, to experience. Uh, I learned a lot from it, from making that. It's a waste of piece of pipe, but I'll find somewhere to use that. And uh, anyway, so I'm going to get this all cleaned up now and get it fit in the car. So here I got it all sanded and I got it fit up in place. And you can see how nice and tight that is to the roof. Going along there. You can see how snug it is going along right here on the sides. It made all the difference in the world and it comes back and it fits around the roll bar here. Okay. It's a bit tricky. All I went and did is, like I said, I turned around and used these two by threes. I had them laid up on the strapping and laid up in place. And when they were in place, then I jacked it up with the floor jack here with a piece of two by three, brought it up in place. Then you can remove these. And then I just took a ratchet strap, strapped down to the front of the bar there, and come back on the main loop and wrapped it around there and then just snugged it up so I can get a nice tug, tight fit. See? So you can see how high that how high and nice and high it fits. The problem I got, I'm tall and I'm big. So I gotta have everything tight. Yes, it's touching the body everywhere. I'm not concerned about it. Um, I want it that way. I'm going to uh, weld it onto the body in certain sections when it gets done. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead now and weld that in place and that'll be another piece done. And then I can move on to these down bars then. So there it is, welded up in place. Nice and tight to the ceiling there. 
you see the cross the other side there how tight it is and then come up along the front you can't see it from the outside and you can't see it from in underneath the windshield either which is nice because usually the biggest problem you always have with these is these bars here are usually down here in your eyesight but i wanted to get it up as high as i possibly can so now I, all i got done is i got to weld it so much all the way around there and around there just enough there to hold the place i still got to weld the outside i'll do that when it takes the body off and then i went and welded it down here same thing welded a bit of it here and welded it here just to give it more strength because i know there's a bit of weight on it, it's not pulling down on it uh but that's that's pretty well where it's got to go where that's two there now next thing i gotta make now is these two door posts okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a simple little template i'm going to measure from here to here and from measure from here up to probably say here somewhere away into the bend and take them measurements and transfer them over onto a piece of board so here's what i come up with okay this is the piece i got here now this is from the the chassis it comes up to the door post the top of the door post and then it goes up on the angle here now how i figured this angle out here all i did is i measured from here back to a certain distance which is basically what i've done i made a triangle out of it is i measure from here back to where i figured the roll bar was to in here okay so i knew it had to come to here and i come down i dropped my measurement down to the rocker here and measured forward to here it was about 24 inches from here to here okay so what i went and did is I measured back from here, back to here, 24 inches. And you can see that's a bit of an angle here. I had to do a bit of a fooling around because this piece was half cut out. But I managed to use it anyway. But I measured from here to here, I back 24 inches. And then I got my height the same way. My height is from, say, the roof skin here to the rocker panel, okay? Which is the same height as that there. I had that measurement there. And then I had this, took this measurement here, okay? Down from here to here. So then I all I went and did then is I drew an intersection line on that and I put a point there, okay? That was my height there, okay? Now I come up from the bottom here and I measured up to where I wanted to end and I measured it right here on the corners where it was too and I have to round it out since, right? Um, but all I did is I just measured it up and I marked it. I cut a, cut, marked a straight line there and a straight line there to get my angle, okay? Because I noticed I have this point here, this point here, and this point here are my measurements, okay? And then I measure across here. It's just a great big trapezoid, or what suppose you want to call it. Just got to do your math, figure it out, all right? And um, anyway, so when I got that done, then I started playing around with it. I took the piece of pipe and laid it here and I trimmed it up because I had to find out where this was coming through the dash. So then I went to come over to the car. Oh, put that back on. I had to do this with one hand. Down through there and I come up along here and I come up parallel to here line the window and i started playing around with ideas of what i was going to do but i was happy with that there that measurement and if you look in straight in through here this is the way it would be shaped okay that's the way it goes there and it goes upside there so then what i went and did i brought this over here and took my measurements off it i put my band on it marked my bends took my little cheap pipe that i've been using a lot and I turn around and I marked, laid this on the bend. That's all I did. You can see it there and I marked it, okay? That's my starting point right there for my bend. That's where it's going to start to. And there's where the bend will start there. And that's where it puts the mark to in the machine that I, I lays against the die, right? I measure from here back to here. I come back here and I figured out that from here to about right here on the mark okay which is about six inches so i added six inches to it right here and then i measure from here up to the very top and i added to them together and where did it go to it come to 52 inches okay it was uh, 24 28 and come to 52 52 yeah, 52 inches is what it come to because i had six and then i had 18 because i added an inch down here also this is 17, but I added an inch. And then I measured from here up to there. And I think that was 24. Yeah, 24 inches from here to here. This was 28. I had two of them together, come to 52. So then I went ahead and I cut out two pieces of pipe, or a piece of pipe first, uh, that length. So I went ahead then, and I marked up my spot that I had here, 18 inches. And I marked it, I put it in the bender, and I put a bend in it. Works out to be about 50 degrees, so I put the bend in it here, okay? 
I had the end of it pretty long. Now, the problem I'm going to run into here now is trying to explain what I did up here because it's uh, it's a crazy amount of fish mouth work going on up here. Um, all I went and did is I actually put it up inside and I started to guess that and I just started trimming away at it bit by bit. Uh, there's a lot of time involved in it. It's very hard to get these angles because this has to fit into the roll bar, okay? And if you look at this, it's a pretty tangly looking piece. See the way it's shaped? Now, this don't fit on a like a straight piece of pipe. This here mounts right in the corner, okay? Like so. That's the way that fits on the car. Similar to like this here, okay? That's the way that fits, like so, okay? And that's what I had to figure out was that angle there. So, that's the tricky part about getting them there. You gotta take your time with it. Again, when I start off making this piece, just like my sheet metal work, I have it longer than it needs to be. And then I creep up on it. It's a lot. You try to just chunk pieces out of it and say, I'm going to be at this all day. I got a lot of time put into all this because I'm just creeping up on it. In the past, I've just gone mad and cut into stuff and figured, oh, yes, I can cut this piece and cut this piece. One cut at a time, okay? Go back and fit it in and the two locations where it's touching on the pipe, you can remove it from there. And then you'll start to see the shape coming into it and just work your way into the shape to slowly come into it. I probably got 30 or 40 cuts into this end here trying to get this to fit on the car. Because my biggest concern is that I was gonna cut it too short and run out down here. But I had an inch down here that I had to play with, okay? So I turned around, I got that fitting in the car uh, and it fits pretty good. I can't put it in there right now because I got to weld it in the car it, I, I can hold it with my hands in place, but it won't stay there But I'll show you when it's mounted in the car once I got this one made and I was happy with how it fit I put this little bend in the top side of it also Okay, because I found that I want to tuck it up tighter to the windshield Because down here it was closer to the windshield down here and as it went up It got wider away from the windshield and by putting this little bit of bend in it now I got a consistent shape of the roll cage going up parallel to the windshield um, so once I got this done I went and duplicated this here and I made a second one and there is my second one the cut on this one here mirrors the cut on this one here I used this one here to start this one here but I gave myself a quarter of an inch when I was close to it and I turned around and I just start cutting it back and then when I got to the point where I thought it was getting close I put it in the car and start test fitting it trimming it test fitting it trimming it it's a lot of work. These can be tricky because this mounts up in the corner of the roll part. I'll show you when I mounts it on. Then I just did the same thing again. Put the bend in it. Uh, put a little bend in it here. Got it to fit in the car. Trimmed it off. I had to cut the bottom off a small bit uh, to make it fit in the car. Now that I got the two of them, I'm happy with two of them fitting in the car. I had to work on this one here more. Uh, it's not fitting exactly yet, but I want to have this one mounted in the car first. So then I can use this one as a guideline to where this one got to be. That way two of them are symmetrical or as close as I possibly can. The hardest thing you can ever do is do is make something symmetrical. Make the left look like the right. Um, it's something I've always tried to duplicate. And, you know, I know for a fact that it's not going to be perfect. But I try as just a quick visual when you glance at it. Uh, just nothing that jumps right out at you. Some little things will be a little bit different. But uh, making the left look like the right... It's always been a trick. So I'm going to go ahead now. i got to get these all cleaned up, get them all sanded down and uh, prepped. And then I'm going to turn around, fit one in the car, tack it in place, and then start working on the second one. And there you have it. Two bars are in place. Uh, I've been fooling around getting them in there, but I got them in there. I'm happy with them. See where they mounts up there and here. I tack welded them in, welded so much of them in. Okay. And I welded so much of them in down there. They're touching the body there pretty close. Same one on the other side. I'm um, pleased with uh, they're what, uh, there's a small, subtle little change in them. I'm not going to tell you. So. <laughs> but uh, I'm happy with her too. I played around with it. That one there was tricky to get in there. Uh, trying to get it to fit, trying to duplicate it to make it look like this one here. I had to compromise and let some things go in order to get it to fit nicer in certain ways. So I got it fitting in there where I'm happy with it. So now that I got that done, that's the main structure roll cage done. I got the main loop done, the halo bar, and the two bars coming down from the sides. As you can see, looking in from the side, you can only start seeing it when it reaches down there. It's hid all the way in behind. 
can't even see it looking across the other side it's the same way it's hid behind the, the post and the halo bar is shoved right upside the roof and like you, when you're looking through the windshield all you can see is the two upper upper bars going up and that's it okay now down here uh next thing i'm going to put in now is a dash bar i'm going to put a bar from here over to here now what i'm after here is that i have a hinge that's got a mount here so i'm thinking about bringing the bar out underneath this here coming forward like this here and turning down and mounting to there uh, the problem I got is that over on this side, I got a turbo that I want to mount to the roll cage somewhere around this area here. And I like to incorporate it so I got room enough for it to mount and it's not sticking up too high and whatnot. And I got room for the exhaust to go down through there. So I got to play around with that. I'm not going to be concerned about this front section right yet. I'm going to put the dash bar in it, get that straightened away. And then I'm going to work on getting the back clued up, getting the bars going out to the back and possibly get the x in it um, i'm running out of pipe here now so i gotta go pick up some more pipe shortly i'm just going to keep going until i runs out of pipe and uh, see how far i can get done with but next thing i'm going to do now is this dash bar all i'm going to do here now is i'm going to measure from this edge here to the same edge on the other side take that measurement and i'm going to add one inch okay that's all i'm going to do is add one inch just flat edge to the other flat edge on the other side right here and add one inch that will give me a half an inch of uh overlap on both sides i may cut it a little bit a little bit wider so i can trim it down so i'll probably give it another inch and a quarter or something like that i don't need to go big numbers so i'll probably leave it at that and then and now i'm going to show you how i do the fish mouth first thing i did is i cut this off my measurement was 47 inches so I cut this like 48 and a quarter for a little bit less, but 40 is about 48 and a quarter, somewhere around there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start from one side and I'll turn around and come back a half an inch. I got this piece of cardboard here I've been using for my straight edge. I just lay it up against like that and I mark it around. I mark the top side and the bottom side and I'm going to cut the fish mouth on the welded seam on the pipe. So what I'm going to do now is I got that marked a half an inch back here and a half inch back here. Okay, now I'm going to set it up. Now, when cutting with a simple old grinder, uh, you'll always find that just cutting a straight line, like so, cutting a straight edge like that, is a lot easier. Just keep your grinder straight and cut like that. Kind of hard to kind of cut stuff on angles and try to keep it not being like this or not being like this. But when you've got the grinder straight, perpendicular to your item, you can usually cut a good straight line, okay? When you get used to it and you get good at it. So you can cut a straight line like this here. Now, the problem with it is, is that the... Uh, the fish mouth or the coped in or whatever way you want to call it um the end of that is caught on an angle okay now usually as a whole saw goes down through it all that this is all i do okay i got the piece of pipe now mounted in the vise there's my one inch mark right here okay now and there's there i got that there that's 45 degree angle so if you look across that that's pretty close to 45 degrees clamped in there i just done that so you'll get a visual of what it is i usually don't bother with that i just puts it in there and wings it as best i can now by looking at that what i got done now is i got that cut that way so if i hold the grinder straight and cut straight across there well i'm going to cut it this way if i cut a straight line now straight across here keep my grinder straight I'll cut that off there and I'll have half of the uh, the opening done. So I'm just going to take the grinder here now, hold it straight, and just going to cut straight across. Now as you can see, that's all I went and did, is I cut it straight across, okay? So now I got one side. Now what I gotta do now is I gotta rotate this around 180 degrees and line this up. Now when you look at across it, you got these two marks here. I'm gonna make them parallel. This could be turned one way or the other. I'll set it up so it's off, and I'll set it up so it's on, so you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. Now if you look in through here and you size that up there, you can see this here straight line. It's like it's going uphill. I gotta rotate this now so this here is straight across this way. Okay? What I'm basically going to do is I'm cutting 90 degrees and 90 degrees is what you're doing, okay? This is a 90 degree bend that you're cutting this way. You're cutting one this way and you're cutting this one here. So two of them should be perpendicular to each other. And if you looked in across them and sized it up, you will see that this one here now is low here and it's high here. So I'm going to rotate this a bit so it's square. 
Now you're looking across there, you can see that's level there now. That line in there that you can see is a level line going across here. I have my mark here, so all I'm going to do now is do the same thing again. Come here with the grinder and cut a straight line across there. There's my second cut. Now that cut there is basically 90 degrees to this one here. That'll come this way and this one will come here. Okay, now it doesn't have to be so-called perfect or whatnot because it uh, a lot of this trial and error and getting used to it and getting the fit. So now I'm going to set it up now and I'm going to dress this edge here. I just got to set up a device here now. Got it made straight and everything. And you can see now this is the way this is shaped here now. All this material here is in the way and this is really thick here on the outside edge, okay? When you're making the cope, the outside edges here are the same width on each pipe so they're not going to go right to the middle of the pipe right here and they're not going to go right to this edge here okay so if you were fitting at it it won't go to here it'll be back to here somewhere as you can see that's about a half inch there right all i'm going to do now is take the grinding stone okay and i'm just going to grind this down and round it out then i'm going to flatten out these two edges so there's nothing here on the uh, edges with the uh the grinding pad the 24 grit and i'll sand them down i'll get that all done As you can see, all I did is I just grinded it straight back with the wheel, with the grinding wheel. All I was doing is using it there and just grinding it inside here, grinding on a bit of angle here and a bit of angle, angle there. And then I took the flat one and I grinded it flat here, okay? So this here, there's no thickness to this outer edge, okay? Then when you could take another piece of pipe and lay up against it, there you have it, okay? Nice snug fit. Very simply done, okay? It's uh, the way I've always done it. Uh, it takes a long time to cut this with a hole saw. Um, this here took me a bit, a bit of time because I'm showing you along the way. But for the most part, uh, it's pretty well straightforward and simple. What I'm going to end up doing now, I'm going to do the other side. And I'm going to do it in real time and show you how long it takes me to actually cut one of these. Sorry for the heat on the background. I got the heaters on so you'll find that little bit of noise every now and again in the background. All I did here is I measured from this side here on the bottom side of the mouth and I measured over to here to see where it was to. And 47 is back this way, a little small bit. So I'm going to cut it a little bit short so I can work it with the grinder to get it to fit in there nicer. So uh, this is what I'm going to do first of all. Then I'm going to set it up in the vise on the angles and just cut it off, flip it over, cut it off. Now I got the angle there. What I went and did up here is I set this up so that it was 90 degrees and this is flat across here. So when I look it across, this here, perpendicular to this, should be that way there. So I'll make sure that this here, these two points here, are parallel. If this was off, this one would be this, in, in this way more and that one would be the other way more. But I got it set up there now so this is straight across here. So that way when I cut the other one, It'll be the same on the same plane as this one here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead now get that one all chopped up and get it all grinded and I'll show you
And that's it. That's all I do with them. You go down through there now, you can see the way that's shaped up there. All right, on both sides. And I got the nice little uh, setup on it. What I'm going to do now is do a quick test fit in the car, make sure everything's fine, and then I'm going to strip this off. Uh, I like to sand all my bars before I put them in the car, and the reason why is that it's very hard to sand the car, uh, all the bars in the car, once it's all welded together and trying to get in around everything and all the X's and everything's in the way. So I like to get it all prepped first, and all I'm doing with that is that I'm going over it first with 40. It may seem aggressive, but there's a coating on these, and I got to uh, get it off, and then I rubs it over it with a bit of 100. Um, it's a roll cage that does it in a satin color, so it's very hard to see if there's any scratches or whatnot in it. And if you look over here, you can see this is the finished product here, what it looks like. That's it done there, okay? So it's all sanded and ready to go. All I gotta do now is paint that, right? So, and I'll probably, I'll, I'll put a rust, I'm thinking about putting this on it, okay? I want it set and finish on it, and I'm thinking about putting this on it and just leaving it all white, having the whole roll cage on white. Do the chassis, the floors, everything in white, firewall. I like to do a little bit of a dress up on this. Usually I does it all in satin black, but I don't know if I'm going to do this one yet. I don't know. Because uh, I want to do the inside of the car white. And uh, it's going to be kind of hard to do the inside of the car white and do the roll cage black. Okay? But I think it'll blend in more if the cage was white. And it, the only place it'll stand out is right here. If it was black, it wouldn't stand out as much. But I'm not worried about that being white or whatnot. So... Anyway, I'm going to go get that bar all sanded and prepped, and uh, then I'll fit it in the car and show you what it looks like. There it is in place. I got it set up level in the car. Okay. Here's what it looks like when it's all fitting. As you can see them. It's a nice snug fit there. So all I'm going to do for now, because I'm not quite sure if I want to move it up and down, because I want to hang the steering column off of this, and I also want to have the point that goes underneath the dash to meet on this point here, right? So I'm going to uh, play around with that. All I'm going to do so it doesn't fall out, I'm just going to put a tack on either side, just to hold it in place for now. I can always remove it later, and then I can move on to the rest of the bars. But uh, you can see now where the bar is too. Going through there. You can line it all up, like I said before, and everything in through the car. And you can see that it lines up good. So... All I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on and dig out some more pipe. I'm going to make these two next bars back here now, going out to the back dash, going down here, and going to mount out here to the frame rails. They'll be the next ones I'll do. So let's move on. I think I've covered enough explaining things. All I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead now and start banging out pipes, and I'll just show you a bit here and there as I'm going. So I won't bore you with more talking than me gabbing, but you get the gist of how everything is done. I make the fish mouth, how I fit everything in there. Everything else now is basically the same as what I'm doing here now. A few measurements, a few bends, and away I go. So let's get this roll cage done. Nothing fancy. There's the two back bars. They're five feet long. I uh, went and uh, fish mouth them up around the top of the pipe. I'm done there. They're just cut on an angle back here. Just on that 
After I'd on the top, I just laid it in place, and then I went and marked it and cut it off and laid it down, okay? <clears throat> I got it mounted there, and I only got it tacked well in place there now. I measured from here to here, and from here to here, and then I done next measurements to see if uh, the two bars were in the same location, measured off the windows, all that type of stuff. So, them two bars are in the same place. I'm debating on whether to put an X in this or not. I'm not quite sure if it wants to or not. Uh, I don't see it in a lot of uh drag cars i see it in some old ones but not so much uh modern cars they're more concerned with what's forward of the the main loop and another thing is is that i gotta put a an anti-sway bar back here and i like to be able to get over the top bar to actually get in and uh, have panels here that i can adjust it from inside the car possibly i don't know yet so i'm gonna leave that for now uh i can put an x in later if i want to uh but i got a bunch of work i gotta put a shock cross member in here plus i got to find out where the the anti-sway bar thing is going so i got to put a cross member there for that as well uh but what i'm going to do now with the remaining pipe that i got i'm going to do much the same as this i'm going to fit i'm going to keep going till i runs out of pipe and uh, the fitment of it i'm going to put the bar across here i'm going to do two door bars i want to go attack them in place because i'm going to end up taking them out again anyway but i'll have them made anyway and I gotta put two bars down here, okay? From here back to here somewhere. I'm not quite sure if I'm going from what I notice in a lot of modern stuff now comes from here, goes back. It doesn't come down. I think that looked a lot better anyway, going back to the car. So I'm going to go ahead now and cut a piece of pipe for here and make that and start making them door bars. So I got the two door bars in place, I got them all cut and fit, they fit nice in there now, when you look at them, ready fit, down the bottom same thing, fits nice down there, not going to weld them ones in, I'm going to leave two of them alone, um, same with the back bar here, I got that laid in place, that'll have to go in, I got to find out the height of that for the seat, for the seat belt, so but I got them made, and I'm trying to figure out uh, how much steel I got left here now, so I'll know what I got to go get. Uh, I got to put a cross member here for the sway bar, and another one back there for the shock shocks. And then I got two bars coming up to the front here, two diagonals going down from the frame rails up to the front bars, and then I got two rocker bars to put in here. I gotta put two of them down on the bottom side there, and then the diagonal here, same with over there. I don't know if I'm gonna put an X in or not. If I do, I might move one up here. I've seen some of them where the X's are like off center, it gives me more leg room. I'm an old guy, so I gotta be able to get in and out of it. And uh, so I might uh, look into just putting a bar there, and then another bar going from, focus, going from there down to here like that. So it'll be a larger opening here for me to get in and out of the car. And I gotta put two bars from here to here coming down. I'm gonna, that's where I'm gonna put them to. I'm gonna mount them from this section here up to the roll cage on both sides. That's them there. And I don't know if I'm gonna put next in or not. I'm not quite sure yet. Um, so I'm looking at I gotta buy two more lengths of steel. I figured I should be covered with their 24 foot lengths. Uh, two of these bars here and two of these bars here is one length. Okay. So that's one length of tubing to make them there and them there. Uh, this loop. And I think one of these bars was another length. Okay. Because, uh, and that's the way it went. And the two door bars and that one there. And then what I'm left with then when I cut up some of them. Because I get them cut 12 foot lengths. I'm left with some of this stuff here. See. Now these are like, I got, I want to, I want to put an X in it. A couple of diagonal bars. Um, the, the door, the bars going this way on the doors. Like I still got, like all that'll get used. Uh, the short lengths of it there, 
So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to make up two cross members there that I'm going to just put back there and lay in place for now so that I can actually know how much more steel I got to pick up. And I'll get them made now and then I'll have to go get some more steel. Okay, I just got back from the steel place. It's the next day now and I picked up a couple of lengths of steel and I picked up some flat bar because I got to make a drive shaft loop to go here and also got to make one to go here. Uh, I got them two bars in place. That one's just tacked in place. That one's just laid in place. I don't know where they got to go, but I got two of them done. And then I just threw everything in place there. Uh, everything's just laid in there, the two door bars and the crossbar. Trying to figure things out here. And I'm sizing up stuff. Next thing I got to do now is these two front bars. But I have a whole bunch of questions. I got a, I'm mounting a turbo right here. I intend to mount it off the roll bar. The problem I got is where it's going to be. I like to position the turbo where I want it to be and then build a roll cage around that so I make sure that I got enough room for everything to go in there. So I'm sizing things up here, I need a turbo. I gotta go upstairs to get that, okay? So I'm here sitting down and figuring out what I need. So I need to pick a ring down the dash, the steering column, the brake booster, uh, a brake pedal assembly. What else have I got? The shifter, the sway bar, I'm going to bring down all the pieces that I need to uh, get this thing, all the metal work done on this here, so I can get it done. I'm sizing up the seat. i got to bring down the seat, because i got to size that up, how that's going to be mounted and where it's got to go. Uh, I already know for a fact i got to do some work here. This here is in my way, okay? I'm a tall guy, and I, when I get the seat laid in place, it seems like this is in the way, so I may change the angle of this and do this type of thing with it, just so I can get room for a seat to drop down. I do have the car mounted on the top of the frame rails. I've done that for exhaust purposes to get stuff to go underneath the car. I can store stuff underneath the car. Motor and transmission, everything is up higher in the car, so there's ground clearance, okay? Uh, I don't have reason, but the problem I'm running into is that I'm probably going to have to drop the seats down through the floor put them lower than the actual floor pan itself. I've done this before. Uh, being the tall guy, that happens, okay? So I got to go upstairs, and I got to get this off jack stands, blow tires up on it, move it ahead, um, and then get upstairs and dig out all the pieces that I need and bring them down and uh, start moving on to getting the rest of this cage done. It's thinking time. I've been, I'd say now, two hours for sure, just sitting around here playing around. I went upstairs and got a bunch of stuff and brought it down. So I haven't got to move the car, I put the car back, put it all back on stands again. Put the whole front back on the car and I've been playing around with now where to mount this turbo, okay? Uh, this is a VS Racing 7875 uh, Next Gen. It's the step up one. Uh, yeah. I got that one there and I got to figure out some way that I got to mount it. And also the problem I'm having here now is I want to run down bars, okay? And then I got to run all the plumbing, the piping and the exhaust out through down there. That's when I'm not doing none of this out through the fender stuff. I'm going straight back and down underneath the car like you would with a regular header. And I've been playing around with it here. I got to put a small elbow here to come out to the intercooler. Come out through here, just got to be cut out of the way. Uh, I couldn't line it up with the headlight because the problem I'm running into is I had to crank the lower flange on the hot side to clearance the tire. I got lots of clearance there now. When you turn it, if I had to have it straight down, it was running into problems with that. If I lowered it down, the problem I was running into was the tire again, right? Clearances. Most cars, there's a lot more room ahead of the tire. This is the problem I got here. I got up as high as I possibly can get it here now. So it's, it's not sticking out of the hood. It's just up as high as I can get. And the problem I'm going to have here now is that I got to find a way to run this front pipe out through here and down so I can still run exhaust back, okay? Uh, I'm going to mount the turbo off this down pipe somewhere. Uh, run a uh, bracket off and everything so just bolts on to the downpipe. A lot of people don't like mounting them permanent and not having them mounted the engine. The engine is solid mounted. Uh, a lot of guys just mount them separately and then run the pipes. You can put flex pipes in them. That's dangerous because the flex pipes destroy. I'm just going to do all my exhaust out of mild steel. See how long I can get out of it. Uh, I like to put a slip joint in there somewhere, but I don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't even got that far yet. I know for a fact that that's going to be mounted right there under the, under the uh, chassis. 
roll cage section there and then everything's going to be ran over to that manifolds i got to play around with that figure out what i'm going to do here for exhaust getting ahead of myself but what i'm trying to figure out here is i got to make this bar here this side's a joke this side here can go anywhere okay there's nothing over here i gotta worry about i can work around it this is the one i got a problem with i could move the turbo back here i can move the turbo on the top i can move it over a small bit i can turn it straight i can't lower it because when i lower it down it interferes on the tire okay so you know i can have it straight but the problem is when you clocks it straight this is closer to the tire so when you turn the tire this way it brings up in the turbo okay so i can't do that so i gotta clock it slightly this way here now i got to dissolve with this exhaust got to go out and go down through there so the pipe has got to come out go underneath this here okay then it's got to have a slight bend in it and join right there okay that's what i've come up with it's just now i got to figure out this here and the angle the whole lot once i makes this one here and gets this figured out i'm going to duplicate the exact same setup over on this side here okay but i had to mount this here in a place you see we got to mount it look ah, don't touch it i got the engine hoist <laughs> i got to bolt into that i just got to hang in there so that i can uh, figure out where it got to go get the heights and everything like that and i've been playing around with clocking these trying to get them where i want them to be turn them this way turn them down turn them in turn this out turn it bottom up then i had to clock it a small bit so it's on a bit of an angle if you look it's not perfectly straight if you look let's see if I can get it there you can probably see it better there see it's clocked a bit right here just a small bit tweaked this way that's just to give more clearance on the tire so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to measure up a piece of pipe to come down here and go underneath here and bend it there and i'm going to play around with this one here i'm afraid i might have i might end up doing a couple of these i don't know i'm going to try to do it in one pipe <laughs> um, so i'm trying to have it so i haven't got to put too many bends in this here i'd like to have this just pass right over the top of it and then turn down that's what i'd like to have done with it uh the less bends you put in this exhaust here the better it is i like to come back and put 145 on it down underneath the car with a 45 done okay that's the plan with that i don't want to have to come up and snake around stuff and down underneath stuff to go out the back end of it the straighter are going to have that the better it is okay so i'm going to go ahead now cut off and take a measurement from the down bar here to come out underneath the hinge here that's where the hinge bolts on there and come forward here and take a measurement and play around with it and see what i come up with so there it is i got it in one try i got about a 45 degree bend on it there and uh, what i went and did then is i just turned around and started coping it around the bottom of the pipe there now in here you can see in there i was going to have both of them meet but i think i'm going to have this one above it and that below it uh, you got to cut a good chunk of the pipe out of the way in order to get it to, to fit to, to get both of them overlapping and i don't like that so i'm going to put this bar above it and have the da dash bar just below it and that way when i put the x in the x can come up on the upper side of this here and go down from there see um i got clearances on that okay that'll pass right over the top of that there right here uh you can see right here i'm going to run a mount off of this pipe here that's going to go out and it's going to bolt on there so that there will bolt there that's where the turbo will mount you can see it there right i'll make a bracket there now and triangulate that down to the bottom down here I got clearances on everything and uh, I'm quite pleased with that it's a bit high in the back I could lower it a bit more but I want to have the back of the pipe up as high as I can on that roll cage okay so if it's down further uh, what will end up happening then everything will go down if she ever gets struck in the front this here will want to go straight in and bend that pipe but if I can get it on the corner and get all the, the uh, pipes all joined there if an impact comes here it's going to have strength passing through the car back through it see and uh like you know you could cut it come up there and come straight in through there and put it there but that to me that's a waste of time okay because the front impact that pipe there will bend in right so but anyway so that's how it fits right there now before i go and i weld that one in i'm gonna make a second one and there is the other one i took the other one and i laid it on the bench and I, I marked over here some measurements that i had i had 50 degrees i my starting point for the bend was eight inches down and then like i cut it 
uh, under 45 on one end, and then I caught an inch and a half off, and so on, and so on. I had some measurements wrote down, but what I went and did after I got the bend put on it, I laid one pipe on top of the other, and then I started fitting them. Now, the angles were a bit different because the pipes, one pipe goes this way, and the other pipe goes that way, so this angle here is a little bit different, right? So I played around with it, and I fit it, and I, you know, caught it and grind it, and caught it and grind it, right? There's a lot of stuff I've been doing with this car that I did not film, okay? There's a lot of hours gone into fitment, okay? Um, way too many to even think about. Uh, I'm trying to get this cage put in this car, trying to clue this up so I know where I'm to, and I got things straightened away. I got this one here now laid in place, and I got it tacked in up there, and I'm happy where it was too. The turbo now will sit here, it's going to be a bit of an angle like that, and the mount will be there, so that'll be done. So now what i got to do now is i got to fit this other one in place, make it look the same as this one. What I went and did back here is I got this bar now, this wasn't welded in yet, okay? That's only just held in place by, just pressed in there. See the nice little cut I got put on it? It's all done with a grinder. And uh, it's all done by hand. So what I did is I made that level to the chassis back here. And over on that side there is actually resting on the bar. So I know now that this side here I got to rest on the bar here. So when I rest on the bar here, I'll go out to the front and I'll, I'll visualize the front of it. Make sure that the distance here looks the same. Back from it. And then I just got to make sure that it comes up on the right angle. So I get that done now. So now... I got two of them in place. I got them in tack welded in place. I played around with them, moved them around, stood back, looked at them. I did everything visual on this here. It's very hard to measure a curved panel. So I stood back, looked at angles, took a few rough measurements off of stuff, see if I was in the ballpark. I'm quite pleased with it too. I'm happy with it. So now I got clearances over here now. Place to put my turbo. I got to make a mount off of that roll cage there. <coughs> So now that I got them two bars in place, what I want to do, I want to run a diagonal from here down. Um, a few guys have pointed out that them braces add a lot of strength to them, and I agree because there's a big span between here and there, and that'll actually box everything in, make everything stronger up front here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bar going from right here straight down to the side of the frame rail there. I don't want to interfere with the top frame rail, because it interferes with sliding the engine forward and backwards. So I'm going to mount it on the side of the rail here and come up to here. I'm going to go on a straight line, uh, 90 degrees to the frame rail, up to this here. And I'm going to go on an angle because I still have to have the exhaust coming up and coming out this way here. I got that piece of plywood laid there for simulations of where the floor is going to be. Now, if I want to, I haven't really sized it up yet, I can move that back an inch or two like so, giving more room for exhaust to go This is going to be a fairly big pipe, uh, four and a half, five inches in diameter is going to go down through here. Uh, I still got to build a manifolds coming off of this here, so I got to, I need a bit of room in here. So I was going to mount it back further, but to me, it's too close to the, the rear mounting point and defeats the purpose. I like to have it in the middle of the two mounts, which so I'm going to put it right here. Now I'm going to walk you through uh, each and the thing. I was talking about how to cut the ends of the pipe and stuff like that, but I'm going to take one piece here now. I'm going to start from scratch, and I'm going to uh, cut it and show you how I make each individual cut. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure up, okay? From the bottom of the rail, the longest distance I have is up to here, okay? The bottom of the rail I got is roughly for the center, this is about 15 and a half. From the top of the rail is about 13, okay? Now I'm going to find some piece of pipe that's in that distance there to give me a piece that'll be long enough. I have some scrap over there and I'm going to have ones to right went. So I got two of these here, and they are 24 inches long. So, and I only need something around 15 feet. So I'm going to cut them off 15 inches. I'm going to cut them off at 16 inches, two of them there. And that way I'll have uh, two of them the same way to start with. I want it a little bit longer. So I'll make sure that I got enough to uh, make the cut. So when I start shortening it, I don't run out. So I'm going to cut that piece off there now, 16 inches. Okay, I got to cut off 16 inches. I'm going to want the bar to go straight up and down here. I played around with the ideas of moving it backwards and forwards and I want it up as close as I can in the middle here. So now the first thing I'm gonna do is you bring that up and you can see where that's touching there, okay? Now I'm gonna eyeball that so it's in the middle of it. Then I'm going to mark 
the middle of the pipe where it's touching, okay? Is all I does with this here. Now, see this distance here? That's roughly the thickness of my finger, the less of my nail this way. I'll come over here and I'll mark this here this way through that there, and I'll cut that straight off. So first of all, I get laying on the pipe. So I got the center of the pipe lined up in the center of the vise. Okay, so that's the center there. Then I got a mark to the height of it. So all I'm gonna do is just cut that off straight down to this edge here. Mark it through there and just cut it straight off. That's all I got done. It's pretty rough. I'll go over and test fit that now and see where it lays. Now you can see that that rests there and a mark there and a mark the other side over here and I'm going to cut this up a half an inch. Cut that up a half an inch. Same way I'm going to cut it on an angle. I'll show you that there now. But you can see the pipe is touching here and the pipe is touching here. Those two points are the points that got to be moved up. Okay, they gotta be cut. So I mark them now and cut them. So I got them again, I got the mark lined up again. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come up here and uh, come up a half an inch, and then I'm only gonna cut back uh, to about here, okay? I'll go parallel to the uh, grinding wheel here. I got this on roughly a 45 degree angle, and I'll cut that straight in through there so that this very middle point will be a half an inch. And I'll cut that off. Right there. All I'm doing is I'm keeping the blade parallel to this here. This is roughly at a 45 degree angle here, okay? And so I'll cut that through. I don't go right through the, the, to the other side. I just go about halfway through. Now what I'll do is I'll turn it around 180 degrees. And I'll line this up so this is level. So if I took the straight edge here and laid that across there like so, when I put that there, I got to make sure that that's level. Because you can see when I turn it, it changes the angle. So I'll make that level there and then I'll clamp that in place there and I'll do the same with cut on this side, put it on a 45 degree angle and make another cut. Come up half inch. I got an idea where that's to. My two cuts. Now I'll set this up. You can see the angle that is on, and I'll grind this down. All I'm gonna do is take the grinding stone now, and I grind back to this upper lip here, this edge. I grind that back to there, right out to this edge here, and same one on the bottom. So there's no material left. There. Now if you look here, you can see that I grind it all off. But you come over here and you actually see tapering back. You can see the thickness of the pipe here. I will grind all this back here and this back here now with the uh, flap disc with the 24 on it, okay?
So here's what you're left with, okay? When it's all grinded back, it's grinded right back to the edges, all the way around. It could be, still be fine-tuned a small bit, if need be, but I'm going to do a test fit on it and see how it's fitting. That's all there is to it. See how nice that fits there? And it looks pretty well at a 90 degree angle there. I can fine tune it later if I need be to get it perfect. But now that I got this all straight away and I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go down and cut the bottom. Now I got that put in place on top. And as you can see the bottom, where it's laying to. What I need to do now is I'll hold that there against that there and you can see the straight edge. Up along there, all right here, I'll mark this now and I'll cut that off on a straight line up through here. So this here will go parallel to that. So what I did is I got a piece of angle iron there and I clamped that to the side of the rail because that's the angle I want it on. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this up through here, like so. And that will be my angle. That there. So now I can take that off and go over on the bench and cut that off. As you can see, I got the line put across there. I'm going to cut that from here right across here. And I'll cut that whole section off right here. And I'll cut this basically. I'm going to take the grinder and go this way with it. I'm going to take the grinder and just cut that straight through there like that. First cut, but we're close, we're getting there. Now I got a bit of a distance up here. What I'll do back down is I'll go back and I'll trim this up. I'll cut a little bit more on this angle here and come back in. The problem you got is when you're out here, okay, that's parallel if that was going straight in, okay. But we're not going straight in, we're rotating the pipe, we're turning the pipe like this. So by doing so, it kind of throws off your cuts. Uh, so you got to take your time with it. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I knew this pipe was too long. I'm going to trim this back on the bottom side here and out to here. Cut this up across here to meet the top side and test fit it again. Now I've made a couple more cuts. It's pretty crude west there so far. But I'm just trying to get it in the ballpark. I'm getting close there now. I'm happy with this too. Now I'm going to go over and I'm going to grind that flat to the top side there and put a nice straight edge on it. I'll keep growing that like that, go back and test fit it, and come back over and fine tune it again. I'm back doing a quick test fit on those close. I just gotta fine tune this here to make it on a 90 degree to the frame rail. Nice fit, along the frame rail there, looks good. It's on a 90 degree here. I measured that up and it's got a nice fit on the top. As you can see, nice fit up along there. Now all I got left to do is I got to sand that. Now there it is, all ready to go, okay. That's what the finished thing looks like. You can see that it's all tapered back out to the outer edges. Okay, if you look through there, you can almost see the, round, the roundness of it. Okay, the other end is cut like that. All this is done 
with the simple grinders that I got here. There's no fancy tools, okay? Um, the next step I got here now is I got to make two of these. So I got one made and I got to make a second one. I will use this one now to get the other one made. I got the same cut as this here on the other pipe. It's just that when I cut this one here, just for argument's sake, if I set this up, I cut this one here, this end here, I'm going to have to flip it around and mount it there like so, okay? So I'm going to go ahead now and set this up, mark these cuts, cut these on angles, and get these two ends fitting the same. Then I'm going to come down here, as you can see here, I'll flip this around, and I'll mark this one here going this way, okay? So that way then I'll have two of them, they'll be the same, one for one side, one for the other. So I'll go ahead now and get the other one made, repeating the same processes. It's a lot easier now because I got something to go by. And I'll go by and I'll go back and forth, fit into the car, make sure everything's all right. And uh, like I won't go right to the cut. Like I won't cut this right off perfect to here. I'll make it so I got to grind this one down a small bit more. And when I cut this on an angle here, I'll come up a bit and cut it a little bit longer so that I can grind back to it. It's a lot easier to remove material, okay? Uh, one thing I've noticed is when I all the pipes that I've cut on this car, I took a measurement, whatever my longest measurement I come up with, I added an inch, okay? And then when I added an inch to it, I was fine, and I had lots of material there that I could safely maneuver back and forth and make my cuts, okay? Uh, depending on the bends of the pipe, some are a bit more trickier than others. Um, I go over here on the car, these ones up here. There they are tricky, okay? You saw me making them. Took me a bit of work, but it's the same process as what I did earlier. Never done no problem up there. Same within the corners, the two back bars, the door bars, all that's done the same way, okay? It's the same process. It's just that, uh, it's just, you know, it's the same process. Simple as that. Same with down here and over here. I've got two points that I got it to fit to. Then I started, then I just took a half an inch off it at a 45 degree angle like that so it would fit the, the thing. The problem you always got is trying to get that plane, this one here, okay? Where is this two? Then trying to cut that pipe in through there, trying to get that angle the whole nine yards. You can use a hole saw. I have one here. Um, one for drilling through pipes and clamp it the whole nine yards. I just find it takes too long. And this is all I ever done with the grinder. I find it a lot faster and quicker. Once you get one or two pipes out of the way and gets the routine down, you should be fine. So I'm going to go make that other pipe now. And there we have the second one. Same process as before. All I did is I just used the other one to get the cuts closer. So I can actually fit them on them. What I done when I cut it down, I left it a little bit long and then I trimmed it back and trimmed it back to get it fitting. But you can see you got left and the right and I took it and which one's the warm one? Here's the warm one. And I took it over here and I test fit it on the car. And I'm happy with that, okay? And you can see the nice little fit and the way it wraps around the bar. There's always a bit of fooling around trying to get them to fit nice, okay? You can see there how nice that fits, okay? Um, this is just some way I figured out because all I do is I, I cut it back a half an inch from my straight edge, okay? You look at that there, and all that's done with the grinder, okay? Um, a half inch back off your pipe. You don't need to go to your center, okay? You get your center of your pipe, just for argument's sake, you got a two-inch pipe, Okay? So you would think that you'd have to go back one inch. No, because this center part of the pipe here and this center part of the pipe here is the same thickness. You want a bit of meat on your outer edges to be able to weld to it. So you don't go right to your center. So like on a two inch pipe, you'd probably go like three eighths of an inch. Right? A little bit bigger than a half inch or something like that on the outside of it. You'll get it. You'll get the feel for it once you start cutting the pipe. It'll come to you. Uh, probably do an experiment on some scrap steel or something like that. But... Like I said, all you needed was the two points. A little piece of pipe. All you needed was the two points to start with, okay? And then cut it back on the angles to make it fit nice. And that's what you'll end up coming up with. I'm going to go ahead now and get two of them pipes installed. So there I got two of them in place. I got them tack welded in. What I'll do now is when it comes time, I got some beads put on one inch beads put on all the spots where it's mounted 
just so I got somewhere to, it's, it's half strong, it's not going to snap the welds or anything, right? Uh, just moving it around. But when I get this car, I'm going to take the body off, blow it all apart, take all the motor transmission out of it, I'll sit down and then I'll weld all this up, stuff up solid. Uh, I don't want to weld it up permanently, permanently yet because I still may have to make changes or something like that. But I had to get this much of the roll cage done before I started mounting things. I got to mount steering column. I had to mount uh, brake pedal booster over here, the turbo, the turbo exhaust pipe. Um, things like the shifter, once I get that mounted, get the seat mounted. I still not finished the cage completely. I still have to do all my door bars going in through here. All they got to be done. I'm not going to get into them. I got to put a rocker bar in here. Uh, I'm not going to put none of that in there yet until I get everything else done. Uh, back here, I got to get the uh, anti-roll bar put in place. I got to figure out where that got to go and get that mounted. Um, also got to put an X in there. I think I decided I'm going to put one in there now. And I got to put the door bars down through here. And up in the corners, right here, I got to put little one-inch bars. The little gussets going this way here and over in this corner here. Few little gussets. My buddy Bobby would love that. Putting gussets in her baby. But anyway, uh, that's what I got done. That is basically the main roll cage in this car. Now I got it all done. I can go ahead now and start mounting all the parts that need to be mounted. And once I get everything figured out, I'll just blow it apart. I got the dash there. I got to mount the dash. Steering column, like I said. I got a bunch of stuff to figure out here now. So... But like, you know, it's not that hard, um, taking your time, uh, just a simple grinder is all I use. I never use no specialty tools to make this roll cage other than a cheap bender that I got at uh, Prince's Auto. Okay, and that worked fine, that's worked best kind. A few modifications had to do to it, but it worked great, okay? So, I'm going to leave this one here. I hope the tips were good, and until next time.